Hello there, how are you doing? Now in this video, let's learn about trades. So trades are the mechanism that allows you to reuse code. Okay, so basically it's like um, instead of copy pasting, you just uh, you include the code from different file to your uh, class whenever you need. Okay, so let's see this in action, then it makes perfect sense. So when I think about trades in our application, where we could implement this one is if you go to person.php as you can see we have this uh, kind of a id system right so it will check if it is if the id is supplied or not if it is no it will auto increment the the last id otherwise it will set the id and all this stuff okay so this is a perfect example that we could extract to trades okay so and make it kind of a, a separate id system so that not only here maybe we could use this trade in other classes as well as our application grow okay so let's let's try this one let's extract this code to a separate trade and let's use that trade here and you you will see how it works okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a folder and inside that folder i'm going to create a trade okay so inside domain let's create one folder and let's call it utils utilities okay. utils and here inside let's create this file let's name it unique.php we want to have the unique id system okay. unique.php now this is the one that is going to be a trade okay so first let's begin with namespace bookstore utils now trade just like we would write class class like so because it's trade it's simple as that trade okay so trade unique this is the one we're going to create now what we want to do is we want to so what we have here is we have this id and the private static last id what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this id and the last id both okay let me comment it out before i delete let's just leave it here and let's put them in trade here like so okay so we just move the private static last id and the the private id property from person to trade okay now let's create a function set id and it will take the id as the argument which we want it to be integer type okay now we check if the id is empty okay so if empty id what we will do is this id we will set that to increment the self last id okay this is same as we did earlier in fact we could even copy from here okay so if that's the case let's copy this block of code all right now because it is in a separate file what we need to do is we need to uh, provide two methods kind of a, a getter and setter method setter will set the id because we need to somehow get this argument right so how are we going to get it so we're going to see that so we need to create two two methods okay so one will be get last id and another will be uh, get id okay now let's go to person.php and we have this access as well get last id let's copy this and then let's put it here okay, we don't have get id we can create one okay
and it will simply return this ID. Okay, so what we did here is we include all the code related to IDs from person to this trait. Okay, and this includes the properties, these properties, it includes this method, and it also includes these getters and setters. We're doing this because traits cannot be instantiated. Okay, so traits they cannot be instantiated, so we cannot add a constructor. Instead, we added this set id method that contains this code. Now, when constructing a new instance that uses this trait, we can invoke this set id method to set the id based on what the user sends as an argument. Okay. So let's go to class person. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use that trait. Okay? So the entire logic has been moved there for ID. So here I can remove all this code. Okay. Let me just comment out for the moment. Now, what I can do is I can simply use the, the trait. To use the trait, the first thing we need to do is we need to go on top and we use like so. Just like we've been doing. Okay. Utils unique. Okay, so now that we have we have used this use keyword to bring this in, what we can do is inside this class, okay, always inside this class, what you do is you want to use this trait inside this class, right? So what do you do? Use unique simple as that okay now this this pattern of this pattern you will see when you're working with laravel framework as well so it's very good to know about the traits and how to use all these now here what i can do is and say this set id now this set id refers to the trait okay and then we pass the argument the one that we get when we instantiate, we get this ID before we were processing this here, right? But now, instead of processing here, we are giving it to the trait so the trait can handle it, okay? So we're giving this ID to the trait, to the trait's method set ID, and we use this trait like so. Now, when this trait gets this ID, it evaluates if it is null it will increment just like it was happening in the person class earlier otherwise it will set the id and then it will see update the self last id as well okay now we have this method as well get id which will uh, give us show us the id so let's give it a try let's try it in init.psp okay so back here what i'm going to do is i'm going to Let's let me comment this out. So the first customer, let's get the get ID. Okay. Okay, make sure you saved all your files first and then okay, it's the unique PSP. Okay, what happened is I put this folder inside domain. I suppose to put it on the same uh, same namespace as domain not inside so what i can do is let me move this folder out of this domain okay first make sure you close all these files okay because we're going to move and later on it will be duplicated so let's close this all okay and now go to your folder directory and take this utils folder drag it out okay i want it to be on the same namespace not inside domain now let's open this up in it.psp everything is fine let's give it a try refresh okay so we get this null so the new basic with the id of one is to null it should increment to two by itself okay now let's try on this one as well and we'll fix that up first customer this one is 
premium customer. Okay, so the first customers get ID and then the premium customers get ID. So let's let's try refresh. Person set ID must be the type of integer now given. Alright, so we give now because of this type hinting here. Let's get rid of it for a moment, just for testing. Okay, let's refresh. Okay, so the integer is two. Two, okay. Let's try changing it to 10. Let's see what we get here. 10, refresh, it's 11. So we, we're seeing the second one. We're seeing the premium customer's ID. Okay, so we're not getting the first customer's get ID. We're getting no, but the second one is working fine too. Okay, so a couple of things I noticed here in our um, trade. Let's change this from private to protected. Okay, so here what I've noticed is I have this double equal. It should be the single equal. So we are assigning this ID to the ID that we get from the argument if there is any ID supplied. Okay, so instead of double quotes, it was uh, double equals by mistake I had. So make sure you make it single. So we are just assigning the value. Of the currently passed in ID to this ID okay so let's give it a try and as you can see now it works so the first customer basic customers ID is one and the premiums ID is two even though it was sent as null it works now if you give some other value first customer let's if you set it to five refresh it becomes five and it increments to six okay so this is the basics of trades how you can extract your code to a separate trade we use this setter set id and then we use that in our person dot psp class we import it we use the trade like so and inside the class we have to define like so use unique and then we just refer to the method as if it was in this class you know, using this Okay, so this is how we can use trade and how we can uh, be more flexible when we importing the trades and using in our classes so what's the next lesson and it will make make it more sense okay so i will see you in the next video where we're going to talk a bit more about trades okay so i'll see you in the next video thank you hello there how are you doing now in this lesson let's learn a bit more about trades okay so what happens if two trades contain uh, contain the same method or contains method that is already in the class So how do how do we deal with that situation? So let's see that in action So what I'm going to do is inside utils. I'm going to create a new file called contract.psp Contract.psp Save and then Let's write a simple trait here First we give the namespace namespace bookstore utils and then we create a trait contract so it will have a function called sign okay sign it will simply echo signing the contract okay just for testing signing the contract what we're trying to do is we have the sign method here we will import that this trait and try to use in a class and then we will have another method also which also has the name of sign and we will see how we deal with this one okay now that we have this trait with this uh, method sign let's try to use this so why don't we create a new one let's create a new one inside domain and let's call it manager.psp okay so let's give it a namespace bookstore domain okay so in manager class we use we use the 
contract trade right so this trade has this sign method now let's try instantiating this manager class in init.php and let's let's give it a try okay so the first thing i'm going to do is first we need to import that class we need to use so let's copy paste and let's change it to manager now let's instantiate let's call it manager equals to new manager and let's try that access that method manager sign okay. and let's simply echo this out okay okay as you can see signing the contract okay so this is another cool way of using trades so you write a certain piece of code in the trade and you import that and you can it can be reusable as well okay so this sign method this trade we used in manager what happens if we imported another trade as well and that also had the same method such as sign what happens in that case let's let's give it a try why don't we quickly create another trade okay let's save this one as let's save it as communicator dot PSP okay now let's go to contract and let's copy paste it's going to be similar save let me reopen again okay it's the same namespace trade let's change it to communicator now this will also have the sign method now it will have it will say something something let's say um, just so that we can see the difference okay so we have two traits both of them have the same method and we are importing them in this manager class so let's see how it works okay let's bring that in okay use let's copy this one use bookstore contract communicator now we use this one as well okay now both of them have the same sign method now we're trying to access the sign method here let's see what we get here refresh okay the trade method sign has not been applied because there is a collision with other trade methods okay so it's pretty useful error message here so in a situation like that how do you solve okay it's pretty straightforward what you can do we have two options one is using this instead of method again okay? one is instead of keyword and another is as okay so we're gonna use both of them so what you can do is use communicator first of all we don't have to write it in two different lines we can just simply comma separate okay so what you can also do is contract comma communicator okay we can do that too so what you can do is we can use contract let's so leave it as it is now communicator it also has the same sign method so what we can do instead is we define like so within the curly braces we can say contract and we access this method like so we're using these two column okay sign instead of so this is the keyword we get to use communicator what we're saying here is use the contract sign method instead of communicator okay so it's it's like reading plain English pretty straightforward and with semicolon and also communicator sign method we can bring in as some other name we can give some other name using this as okay so cmm -M, communicator sign so what we can do is communicator sign we can say as let's give it a name make sign or anything you like okay now this way we have access to both we have access to the the sign method 
from the contract and we also have access to the sign method from communicator but in this case we give that a different name so that it doesn't collide okay so let's give it a try refresh okay sign in the contract we get the sign and this one is sign is being used on the of the contract okay sign in the contract now we can also try manager sign what did we name that we name that make sign okay make sign save it refresh okay and this one is from the communicator okay so this is how you can avoid the conflict okay it's pretty straightforward now what about you had another function within here as well sorry not on this one in manager class what if you had another function like sign on here as well sign here within this class so in this case what happens is it takes the precedence over all these other other methods okay so if it is defined here it will be used okay so we can say it is from the class it will override the the sign method that is from the trade okay save it okay so it's from the class itself and then the second one is from this another trade okay so that's how it works so i'll see you in the next video where we're going to learn about exceptions i'll see you in the next video thank you